Hi folks, Lee here again. Welcome to Ninja Guitar. So, so far we've looked at the major scale and its relative minor scale at the sixth um, mode, if you like, and also the second and third modes, Dorian and Phrygian. So you've got basically three modal minor scales within a major scale or a major key. But what about scales such as harmonic minor and melodic minor? So let's have a closer look at harmonic minor then. Harmonic minor isn't too difficult to, to play, number one. Once you've grasped the minor scale, natural minor scale, what we're talking about doing is, is actually altering one or two notes at a time on any of these scales. And that's effectively what took place when the harmonic minor scale became popular, that the natural minor scale was altered um, to suit the harmonic needs of classical composers. And basically, the reason that that took place was because this famous kind of sequence of moving from the dominant chord back to the root chord was prevalent in Baroque music prevalent in all Western music isn't it really when you hear a 145 it wants to go back to back to that major or back to the root or the tonic so that do, the fifth chord in a major scale is very powerful it pulls you back that's why it's called the dominant and the fourth one just slightly um, less powerful and that's why it's called the subdominant but the, the fifth it's very powerful always wants to pull you back and that's why uh, Baroque composers would use it to finish a piece or back to the minor. But the problem with having as a minor, to bring you back to A minor, is that your E, which if you take your A, a natural minor, so you've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G, your E, if we're taking it from C major, is a minor. And it doesn't quite have the pull of a dominant seven. So have a listen to this. This is E minor to A minor. not quite got the same power as it hasn't got the finality that you that you get going from the dominant to that and that's exactly what that's exactly how uh, baroque composers felt about it too so what they did was they thought well we'll just alter the scale then and so we want to alter the minor third within that e minor to make it a major so we can turn it into a dominant seven and that's what they did. So by altering that note in the scale, which in this case, if we go through our scale, look. There's our minor third of the E minor, which is a G. What they did was to raise it to major. So minor third, major third. So now becoming G sharp. And you end up with this scale pattern instead. which looks like this close up. So now because our clever composers have altered the scale, they have now got the ability to use and get the endings, the cadences, perfect cadences that they wanted in their compositions. So and that's a little bit of kind of a brief history, if you like, of where it came from. I think it's quite important to know because um, that's a question I get asked a lot. Where does harmonic, why is it called harmonic minor? Well, that is the reason in very, very simple terms that it, why it's called harmonic minor. From a practical perspective, um, there were two, you could learn that pattern across the whole fretboard if you wanted to. And certainly if you were into kind of your, your neoclassical rock and metal like Ingrid Ingr Malmsteen and that, those kinds of characters, then you would need to. You've got to kind of get that under your fingers if you want to play that sort of stuff, really. But you don't necessarily have to just treat it as um, in that way. It's very interesting compositionally as well, because by raising that uh, note, you end up with another minor third interval sat between two notes, which has got a very Eastern vibe. And so the modes can, of that particular scale are going to now change, aren't they? They're going to sound different as a result of that. And in addition to that, all of the chords are too. 
So on screen now we've got the chords that have now altered for A harmonic minor. Here's A, here's a natural minor and now underneath them we've got A harmonic minor's uh, chords. And the, one of the interesting things for me about them, harmonic minor, is sitting inside it, because of that interval, is a little diminished pattern on the guitar. Which means that you can use it, you could be playing harmonic minor, and at any given point, you could go into diminished runs and diminished patterns to uh, to you know for your compositions or or literally just for your solo efforts if you wanted to and then come back to, back to your harmonic minor as well so having an understanding of harmonic minor is going to increase your creativity i think and maybe even inspire yourself to to write in a different genre of music or or even just to take a section of a piece of music that you have written and alter it slightly to make it more interesting and ear catching if you like so certainly if you uh, take that scale and its patterns and start to have a look like I have at, at the you know, uh, different intervals within it and certainly on the guitar and how they sort of all kind of fit together you're going to be able to come up with some quite interesting things I think. One of the cool things about harmonic minor is its fifth mode. Uh, it's called Phrygian dominant so if we're in the key of A harmonic minor then it's fifth mode of that is going to be started from E, isn't it? So we've put E at the beginning, we've now got the fifth mode of A harmonic minor, and that's got a really cool kind of Eastern vibe to it. So let me give you like a drone note of E, and then I'll play some octave patterns of, of that scale so you can hear it. So you, can, you could employ different rhythmical patterns against that, couldn't you, if you wanted to, rather than just playing going up and down that particular scale. So you get the idea. It's very interesting and it might, you know, inspire you. So give it a try. So, so far then, we've covered um, all of the major scale mode, uh, minor modes of Dorian, Phrygian and Aeolian. We've looked in depth at harmonic minor and also Phrygian dominant, which is one of its modes um, from a scale perspective. What about melodic minor? Well, the story of melodic minor, in you know, very, very simple terms, kind of leads on from our story about harmonic minor. So,